think it's right there. I gotta make it. The stories of Eddie and Evelio are the real legacy of Mariel, but it's not the stuff of which headlines are made. That spot has been reserved for the minority, Castro's criminals. Only a small percentage of those who came on the Mariel boat lift were either hardened criminals, mental patients, or communist agitators, but they have left their mark. Newswatch 10's Jack Rothholt says, although the crime is real, the fear these cast-offs have created has unjustly scarred their countrymen and the community. Virtually the only thing which stood between Cuban criminals in the streets was one simple question. Were you ever in jail? It was a human shell game, open to human deceit and human error. In the words of one South Floridian who was there, the screening process was a farce. It was a farce if you see how the people that were in the camp were processed after. O sea, for example, any person that went through a camp have to wait for what they call the Washington clearance. That they have to wait for a clearance before they can be released from the camp. We was releasing the people there in the gate, right away. Lázaro Estevez told the INS he was in jail because he was unemployed. In fact, he was a hardcore criminal with the scars to prove it. A tattoo on his chest with the inscription, Friends are those who are dead. A true product of the Castro jails. He was 10 years old when he went in, his crime, stealing a bicycle. By the time he got out 11 years later, by his own count, he had, quote, cut 107 faces. Now he is back in jail in the Dade County stockade, charged with possession of cocaine. He says, the 11 years I was in jail had a lot to do with it. I know what it is to be hungry. I know what it is to be punished. I know what it is to be killed or to have to kill. Were you afraid of freedom in this country? That goes without saying, because after 11 years behind bars and then out on the street, it's like you've been dead and then born again. It is a typical story for so many Mariel refugees, arriving alone, not a penny in their pockets, their only skills, the ones they learned in jail. Some of them took to their old ways, creating a fear in South Florida that grew out of violence. September 12, 1981, a Miami police officer is shot dead. The gunman, Jorge Martinez, is from Mariel. September 13th, a robbery at a Burger King. A store clerk pulls out a can of mace. The robbers shoot her dead. The gunmen are from Mariel. February 2nd, 1982, Sergio Ortega Roja hijack an Air Florida jet with 77 aboard, back to Cuba. His home port, Mariel. When they are caught, justice is swift and sure. You ought to be very, very fortunate in your feelings right now that 12 people in the community viewed you or viewed the situation in the light that they did. You, Mr. Cordero Pina, are an ungrateful sociopath. You are ungrateful to a country that accepted you. You are ungrateful to a system that gave you a fair trial. And you are ungrateful in my court to a lawyer who did his utmost to defend your interests. He took away the life of a 19-year-old girl. I can't bring her back, but I can assure you, I can assure you that you will never do that again. There is no doubt, Mariel refugees are responsible for crime, and often they are very violent. But in the words of Judge Seymour Gelber, a little perspective is needed. The branded image of Marielito Gelber says, is grossly exaggerated, magnified by a community looking for a scapegoat. A scapegoat for the burning rage in Liberty City, for the escalating drug wars in South Florida. Any emigration to a country uh, causes some sort of chaos. Uh, Mariel's constituted 6% of the total population. And an estimate I made based on the people who were in jail and awaiting bond hearings showed that about, they committed about 12 to 15% of the total crime, which means double the normal population. But uh, twice as much population is not unusual. There were some uh, ethnic racial groups in uh, Dade County that commit as much as three or four times their population. Even as is, it's not uh, quite as bad as, as it has been portrayed or has been perceived. For every story like Lacero's, there are dozens of others like Luciano Ramirez. 
Ramirez was jailed in Cuba too. Now he is a steward at Sheridan's Key Biscayne Hotel, trying to save up enough money to buy his own metal welding business. Well, what I want to do is uh, work in this country and uh, put my own business and work for myself and be free. There are many others who share in Luciano's quest for freedom, but for them it is still an illusion.